I want to break from this story for just one moment because live on the Hill, uh, Senator McCain, along with uh, Senator Lindsey Graham and Senator uh, Kelly Iot, are giving a news conference right now about their concerns over Benghazi. Let's listen in. On September 11, 2012, we will be introducing this afternoon a resolution that would establish such a select committee and we will urge the Senate leadership to act on it as soon as possible. While we await the findings and recommendations of the administration's internal review of the Benghazi attack, it's essential for the Congress to conduct its own independent assessment. Let me be clear, there is no credibility amongst most of us concerning the administration and the numerous controversies and contradictions that have been involved in their handling of this issue. Uh, it's essential for the Congress to conduct its own independent assessment. Several different committees of jurisdiction in both the House and Senate are calling briefings, planning hearings, and reviewing portions of this case. We believe that the complexity and gravity of this matter warrant the establishment of a temporary select committee that can conduct an integrated review of the many national security issues involved which cut across multiple executive agencies and legislative committees. The select committee is needed to answer because more than two months after the Benghazi attack, there is still many unanswered questions. Among them, why was the security at the consulate so inadequate despite two previous attacks on that facility in April and June of this year, an assassination attempt on the British ambassador in Benghazi around the same time? Did the President's national security staff make him aware of these attacks? And if they did, why didn't he take the lead, which is the President's responsibility to ensure that our consulate in Benghazi was better fortified and our people there better protected? What actions, if any, were taken to respond to a classified cable that was allegedly sent from our embassy in Libya back to the State Department on August 16th, stating there were numerous armed groups in Benghazi that posed a threat to the security of the consulate in Benghazi and that that consulate could not survive a sustained attack like the one that eventually occurred a month later at the hands of one of these militia groups. What action, if any, did Secretary Clinton take in response to these repeated warnings from her people on the ground, including Ambassador Stevens, in his final official message? Why were repeated requests for security in Libya apparently turned down by officials in the State Department? On the anniversary of the worst terrorist attack in American history, and after multiple attacks this year on our consulate in Benghazi and other Western interests there, why were U.S. armed forces in the region not ready and positioned to respond rapidly to what was a relatively foreseeable emergency? Why did senior administration officials seek to blame a spontaneous demonstration for the attack in Benghazi when it was later acknowledged that no protest even occurred in Benghazi and that the station chief in Tripoli was apparently reporting back in the first 24 hours that it was a terrorist attack? Why did President Obama insist that he label the events in Benghazi as an act of terrorism on September 12th? and then emphasized that in his second debate with uh, Governor Romney. And we now know that in an interview with 60 Minutes on the same day, he explicitly refused to characterize the attack this way. And he then spent nearly two weeks putting the emphasis on a spontaneous protest to a hateful video, including in his address to the United Nations on September 25th. Why did our ambassador to the United Nations in interviews five days after the attack also try to blame on the hateful video when it was clear from the earliest hours of the attack that it was sophisticated, that it was a sophisticated offensive, that no protest ever occurred outside of our consulate in Benghazi? And if Ambassador Rice was relying on intelligence assessments, as she insists, why were those assessments so dramatically at odds with the earliest reports from our people on the ground. And perhaps most importantly, why does the administration still appear to have no policy to deal with the fact that Al-Qaeda and affiliated groups have established sanctuaries in eastern Libya, a country that we helped to liberate 
and which has elected a pro-American government that is eager for our assistance. This is perhaps the most troubling question of all. The pattern of violent extremist activity in eastern Libya was well documented by our intelligence community for months leading up to the attacks of September 11, 2012. The threat reporting was extensive, and yet the administration seems to have done little to support our many Libyan friends and partners who did not overthrow Gaddafi only to see al-Qaeda-affiliated terrorists and militias take over large parts of their country. The American people deserve answers to these and other questions related to the Benghazi attack, and Congress has a unique and constitutional role to play in getting to the truth of this matter, as well as compiling the lessons of this tragedy so it's not repeated. Ambassador Chris Stevens was doing everything we want our diplomats doing. He was getting outside the wire to advance America's interests and values in our increasingly dangerous world. While we want to encourage that kind of diplomacy, we also want our fellow citizens who engage in this important work to know that their government has taken every reasonable step to ensure their safety. For the sake of the families of those four brave Americans who sacrificed their lives, they and the American people deserve answers. The only way they're going to get those answers in a comprehensive and cohesive and believable fashion is through the establishment of a select committee. If we don't uh, appoint a select committee, we're going to make a huge mistake as a body. Uh, General Petraeus has now indicated he will testify before the Intelligence Committee. That's likely to be in a classified setting, I don't know. But I do know this, that we're likely to call Leon Panetta and General Ham and others in the Armed Services Committee. And I believe that the Foreign Relations Committee would want to hear from Secretary Clinton uh, and all those who are responsible for consulate security. The problem is that the three committees will not be able to hear what the other groups are saying. I'd like to ask General Petraeus some questions. And I'm sure there are people on the Intel Committee who would like to hear what the Department of Defense has to say about their handling of the Benghazi attack. And when it comes to the State Department, all of us would like to know why were there so many, un, uh, so many requests for additional security denied in the August 15th uh, cable back to Washington where Chris Stevens is telling Secretary Clinton, we've identified 10 al-Qaeda militia groups in Benghazi Two of the ten we now suspect were involved in the attack, and the final paragraph, or close to the final paragraph of the cable says, if there is a coordinated attack against the consulate, we cannot defend it. So four uh, Americans are dead. The first ambassador is killed in 33 years in the line of duty. I think this is a symptom of a greater problem in the Mideast, quite frankly. For those reasons, I think it's important that the Congress pick a process that is rational, logical, and will get to the truth the best we're able to discern what the truth is. Conspiracy theories are running rampant. How many of you are getting calls about, have you heard this, have you heard that? A segmented stovepipe investigation where you have three different committees going off in three different directions, not comparing notes, not being able to do this in an organized fashion is going to lead to failure. It's not going to result in the quality product we need to dispel unfounded conspiracy theories unfair accusations, and most importantly, it will not lead to the work product to hold people accountable for what I think is a national security debacle long in the making, should have been avoided. So that is why I am urging Democrats and Republicans to put aside any partisanship we may have in this new Congress uh, on Benghazi and find a way forward. Uh, Diane Feinstein has been terrific. It's not that I don't trust Diane. She's doing a great job. But she cannot know what the, the uh, Armed Services Committee may find out, and it's important that we all know about what's going on here. So I think if there was ever a time in recent history for the Congress to follow models that we've used in the past, it is Benghazi. Watergate investigation benefited from a joint select committee. Iran-Contra Contra benefited from a select committee. I think finding the truth about Benghazi is only possible if you combine the resources of these three committees and do it in a professional manner. And if we go down this segmented stovepipe road, 
we're going to fail the American people and not have really any hope of getting the truth out. <clears throat> when four brave Americans are murdered as a result of a terrorist attack, there is nothing more American or more important responsibility than members of Congress have to get to the bottom of it. And frankly, right now, where we are, we have more questions than answers. And the answers that we have gotten, because it has been given in a dis disjointed fashion from the administration, uh, the answers we have have raised more questions. They've been inconsistent with each other. And at times, they've provided misimpressions and misstatements to the American people about the nature of the attack that occurred. Uh, that resulted in the death of our four brave Americans. And so if anything cries out for the establishment of a select committee, we are going to continue on this path of all of you and the American people receiving uh, disjointed information if we do not establish this select committee. Because three important committees of this body have very clear jurisdiction over this. Uh, certainly the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, uh, certainly if you look at the Senate Armed Services Committee and the Intelligence Committee, all of the questions that Senator McCain outlined before, after, and during, they intersect in some way in those three committees. And if we don't bring this investigation together, the American people are going to still continue to ask these very important questions. And Senator oh. Kelly Ayotte, uh, along with two other leading members of the Senate Armed Services Committee, giving a news conference, Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, and also Senator John McCain of, John, of um, Arizona, suggesting that there is a need for a congressional committee at this point to investigate the Benghazi affair. In fact, a temporary select committee is what uh, Senator McCain was suggesting needs to be uh, convened to answer some of the questions, not the least of which um, he suggests that security was so inadequate at the consul, um, at least the consulate, the, it was like a consulate, it was more of a mission in Benghazi, it wasn't an official consulate in Benghazi, but specifically he referenced the, uh, the email of August 15th in which um, there was this effort to get more security to suggest that this mission cannot sustain any kind uh, or cannot defend itself against any kind of sustained attack and yet uh, there was no additional security that was sent. So uh, that is clearly a clarion call to members of Congress that this is what this committee wants, asking for a bipartisan committee but there are three Republicans asking for that bipartisan committee and you can keep watching that news conference as well on CNN.com slash live. Back after this.